afternoon. Welcome. Good afternoon, Your Excellencies. Good afternoon, our distinguished guests. And welcome to our solution driven mansion. This is the Labor Room Executive Council. You're welcome. We'll Thank start you. by introducing ourselves. We'll start from the spokesperson of the Executive Council. You're most welcome, our distinguished guests. I am Dial, nice Jonathan. The Labour Governor for both institutes are working on a project titled Mobamaya Rightly. In English, it means educate children. It's targeted at providing education aid materials for children in crisis areas starting from the IDP camps in the United States. Thank you. From the lectures given to the nation, the Labour State, my name is Jim Lau, and you're welcome. My pet project is called Sima Taraba. 100% of the tourism project aimed at exposing the British of the Thank you. I also welcome to be in August. I'm Adela Kondei Kabe, the Labour Government of the And my pet project is Waste to Heart. It's about preserving the environment and adding value to the Waste to Heart. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
My name is Chinedu Namaroba, representing the Light of the Nation, Anambra State. And my pet project is Community Library Development. And the vision is to propagate and to restore the reading culture in our local communities. Thank you. From the souls of the nation, the state that has kids to the nation, I am Ike Chukuhen of Zibo, the Liberal Government of Bonnie State, and the founder of Image Entrepreneur Hub, creating an enabling environment for the dreams of every Nigerian youth. It is said that 70% of the Nigerian population is made up by youth. Imagine 30% of these youths are sent back. You're welcome. You most welcome our distinguished guest. My name is Shara Demigi Istifanos. I'm the Liberum Governor for Kaduna State. And my personal development project, which I tag the Dada Initiative, that's the Media and Drug Abuse Initiative. The vision to reduce drug and crimes, crimes and violence rate in Kaduna State and the country at large. You most welcome. Thank you. Welcome back. Welcome, sir. My name is Mr. Jake Shinti. I'm the neighboring governor for other states. And my first project is called the New Abba Empire. I'm a fashion designer and a model, so I intend to showcase the permanent project to the world. You're welcome. Good evening, uh, esteemed guest. My name is Prince Fusil, the neighboring governor of the state. The third project is Star Life Foundation, an integrated charity foundation that, uh, that have, uh, extended a uh, number of uh, charity to the health sector, the hospitals, to reach out to the, uh, the less privileged uh, patients in the hospital to pay their bills that they cannot afford. They, uh, we do reach out to the, uh, women with uh, vaginal fistula diseases. Uh, reach out to them, prevent them after the treatment uh, because some of them don't like going back to their people because when they have the disease, the people rejected them. From there, we do reach out to uh, it. Though the uh, foundation has been running for the past 10 months now, so we reach out to it for the ICT training and the other women are empowering it. My name is Ife I'm a Liberal Governor of State, and my pet project is Art and Liberal Movement. We then work with psychologists, NLP practitioners, counselors, life coaches, in order to meet the emotional, mental, and psychological fitness of youths and teenagers in Nigeria. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. From the state of Hamilton, Fara State, my name is Unuwa Tobi. My personal pet project is called International Values. It's a book that contains our social, civic responsibility as Nigerians to help correct the responsibilities that we have in the educational sector. We have to keep asking the question if the schools is producing more casualties and the street is producing more celebrities, our children will ask the question which we need to go to school. And we want to be able to be able to be The last but not the least, from the Eastern Heartland. My name is Munye Kure Godwin Mwachukunaike, and I am the Labour Room Governor for Imo State. I dream of Nigeria running an intellectual economy where the next billion dollar startup like Facebook and Uber can come from the creativity of our citizens. <laughs> My personal development project is the Imo Innovative Hub. It's like the Silicon Valley in Imo State, where about 1,000 youths from Imo State will get trained annually on digital skills so they can be able to earn a living. We're also partnering with a platform with the capacity of employing 10 million Nigerians with or without certificate. The platform is called 234work.com. It allows everyone to use their knowledge, talent, skill, or hobby to earn reliable income as an independent worker. You're welcome to our Solution Driven Mansion. Thank you. Of course, you've met the Labour Governors here present. And uh, permit me to tell you that this is uh, the Super 37 Solution Reactors. We are to initiate and sustain a prolonged social, political, and economic chain reaction across Nigeria. Here you have professionals in various fields. You have doctors, lawyers, linguists, entrepreneurs, uh, engineers, ICT professionals, and all that. So we've been thinking and talking about solution for the past 56 days. You're welcome. You have the floor. Thank you. Uh, your Excellencies, I think I need to tell you that it's, it's, I'm very, very delighted to be with all of you this evening. 
Um, just meeting you and listening to all of you uh, reaffirms that hope that I have never lost that Nigeria, Nigeria is a great country. That greatness may not be showing today. It is not showing today the way that we wish it to, but it is soon and very soon going to show. Not to people like you will Nigeria be an unknown nation anymore because you are going to come out, you are going to do things. Here. And I see you motivating from all your different projects. Your projects are going to bring up a crop, a very critical mass of other young Nigerians, not even only young. Somebody said, I'm doing women education, adult education, even young and not so young. But you're pulling Nigeria up from the roots itself. And I'm very, very delighted to meet you. My name is Shola Anuga. I'm a psychiatrist. I'm a lecturer in psychiatry in the University of Abuja. But, and I'm also a consultant psychiatrist at the National Hospital. But I'm here today in my capacity as a mental health advocate with Zion Ame, who's going to introduce himself, who actually uh, invited me here. All right. Good evening, everybody. I must uh, say that uh, you guys are. Okay. 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 Um, let me start again by greeting everyone. Good evening, everybody. I was uh, first of all congratulate and at the same point appreciate you all for uh, how far you have come because I understood that uh, you have already begun a series of projects in your various states and uh, you are also having a lot of projects that you would want to establish after now. Now I haven't said that I would like to also let you know that the tomorrow of this nation is in your hands. If this nation is going to ever succeed, if this nation is going to ever be alive to the dreams that um, you all have today, it is in your hand to make it a reality. Please do not just look at it within the years of your existence or your living on earth here. We all believe that you should be able to like that live at least 100 or 120. But please look beyond that and see what you can leave to posterity, to the growth and the national development of Nigeria. Now, my name is Zan Ahmed, like um, I call her my mom, all right? Now, uh, I'm a mental health advocate from the Mandate Health Empowerment Initiative. It is a number of mental organization based in Nigeria where we drive strongly Okay, a campaign on mental health, and um, I'm sure at the cost of our discussion here, we will be able to like uh, uh, pick one or two things that uh, will aid your personal goals or vision uh, across your states and then to the nation at large. Thank you very much, for this. So. Um Ladies and gentlemen, I want this to be, we want this to be as interactive as possible. So we're not going to be talking for long. I'm going to give you a very brief charge, and I want us to talk about what I consider as the three R's, respect, responsibility, and the rule of law. Those three things are very important to the development of any people. And I think that they are keystones also for personal development and achievement. Success in life begins with respecting yourself, seeing yourself as above certain things. I respect myself, so I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to steal, I'm not going to be engaged in crime because I respect myself. <coughs> and I respect other people. So I'm not going to try to cheat them. I'm not going to try to take them for a ride or try to take other people as fools whom I should take advantage of. So respect for ourselves and for others that we meet is very, very fundamental. Responsibility follows on from there. The 
reason some people go further than others in life a lot of the time is because of an inbuilt sense of responsibility. Even when you are brilliant, if you don't have that sense of responsibility to say, I have this exam, I have this project, I have this activity or the other to run, and I'm focused on it, and I'm going to give it my best, and I'm going to be prepared, and I'm going to deliver at the highest level. If you, if you don't have that sense of responsibility, chances are that you are not likely to achieve what you would have achieved if you otherwise had that total sense of responsibility. I'm responsible for myself. I'm also responsible to others. You're here, for example, you are representatives of your various states. You are responsible to deliver and Ultimately, we are all responsible to our creator. We're not, uh, we're not an accident of nature. We are divine creatures. And this is one reason why I love your, your, what your project is all about, uh, this labor room project. Because I said, look, Africa itself is the origin of mankind is the cradle of civilization. It has to come back to us. That dominance has to come around again. And the way we're going to do it is with our brains. It's not brawn. Black man is not a jackal. Black man is intelligent. We have brains, and it's proven every time. It's proven every time that our brains, our skins may, be, uh, may look brown, but our brains are definitely not dark at all. We have very brilliant very bright brains. Put a, 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 put a black child somewhere now. Let another child have been doing it before. Just expose a black child to it briefly without limiting him. He'll pick up or she'll pick up and go far. So responsibility and finally the third one, the rule of law. We have to make good laws. We have to, our society has to be governed by good laws, which we all should obey. There should be no bending of the law. There should be no sacred cows and no special exceptions. If we run our society based on this, I have no doubt that our society, our nation, and Africa will be great. So thank you very much. Let's interact. Mm. Permit me for not in, in, introducing. This is a spokesperson of the Labour Executive Council, the Labour Governor for Borono State, the Bank Nice. And here we have this, the Secretary of the Labour Executive Council, the Labour Governor for Ampara State. So she's going to pilot the, the discussion. Once more, thank you, Master, for coming. Uh, I'm Wednesday, sorry to take it this direction. In June, the Bible study, that's for the Christian session. We're talking and we discussed more about respect and responsibility. So I must say that the spirit is one. <laughs> so the house is open for discussion, questions, and contributions, starting from level of government for Can't you sit? Let's sit. No, that's uh, the That's it. Okay. Uh, my question is, uh, at what stage how, how I want to know the processes of how one starts to have mental disorder. How does it happen? Because it is, it is really strange that you are with someone that you know is quite well, you discuss with him just, let's say, a few minutes or hours. You will see that he's not the same person, you know. He will be saying things that are entirely different from the <laughs> planet itself. So how are the processes, what happens, and how does it lead to that? Okay, um, thank you. The thing about uh, mental disorders is that, first of all, the person's brain, the person's brain has to be at risk. So what we're saying is that the genetic component is the first thing. Um, 
mental illness does it does run in families. The genes carry it. The thing is nobody has been able to pinpoint for sure which particular gene. But we know that is mental illness is genetic. It does run in families. But what does the gene do? People's genes make them prone to breakdown as a result of stress. That stress could be mental stress, like people go through difficulties like you know traumatic situations or stress like not getting enough sleep uh, so, sleep sleep for example something as simple as sleep some people will say have you ever seen that uh, two people were preparing for an exam and both read all night one will go and do the exam and come out successful the other one will come out and say i, I couldn't remember anything i just drew a blank because he stayed up all night or because he used a drug some people will use a drug now somebody say ah take this drug if you take this drug you will be awake you'll be able to study all night the person takes it lo and behold instead of becoming able to write something that becomes lacking in coordination because messages are carried about in the brain through electrical and chemical reactions that happen in that brain so drugs can derail that can can alter that emotional stress can can alter that <coughs> including emotional pain that's why if i know somebody lost a relationship or somebody somebody you know what underwent stress and after that they were no longer the same so that is the way that it is it's a combination of stress and a combination of how the person's brain is programmed by their genes and most importantly is one of an example of the things. <laughs> lack of sleep is an example of physical stress. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. If lack of sleep causes mental health, <laughs> then of course here in this mansion we will be going crazy by the time. <laughs> because uh, we barely sleep. 5 a.m. we are we'll still be awake. Um, my question is, um, um, though I've read about it, you know, but nothing conclusive. But seeing you here now as an expert, I would like to find out from you. So many times we hear, maybe we tell someone, use your use your brain, don't use your heart, or use your heart, don't use your brain, or decide from your heart and not your brain. So it makes us think as if these two things are two components by which you can make two different sets of um, decisions. Please, I don't know if, if there is such a thing, and if there is, can you please throw more light on it? That's number one um, question. The number two is, we have um, this, uh, though it's been, some studies are now beginning to dispute it in the Western world, but I want to hear from you if men and women have the same mental stability. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. Um, your first question was you wanted to know when we talk about the heart and the brain. That thing is rooted in uh, history because you know that um, people didn't always understand the human body so for example people felt that you know feelings come from the heart so when people are saying use your heart they're talking about use your emotion make an emotional decision but when they say use your brain they because it used to be taught that the heart was the center of feeling but the brain was the center of control so when you are being told use your brain you are being told look put the brakes on it don't let the idea run away be very rational and you know so that was that is the historical origin of that. Science has since proven that the heart is a pump. That is why people can live now, you know, with it being replaced because it's a pump. It's not you don't you don't feel for yes we, we our heart pumps the blood around us, but but our feelings come entirely from 
our brains. So whatever we do is a brain decision. It's just that there are different parts of the brain that are more emotional and there are other parts of the brain that help us to put the control. The most important thing is that when we have a decision to make, we should be rational about it and we should be kind. We should be empathic. Kindness is never a weakness because you are leaders. And you should always remember that the fact that I'm kind doesn't make me a weak leader. Wow. The fact that I'm empathic doesn't make me a weak leader. This judgment I'm about to give, this decision I'm about to take, if I was, somebody else was in this position deciding for me, would I want him to decide this way? If you pass your decisions as leaders through those tests, then you will always decide, of course, using your brain, but with a foundation of kindness and empathy. So that's for the first question. Now, your second question has escaped me. Yes, yes, men and women. Oh, men and... No, men and women are different. But as for emotional stability, yes, um, we all could have the same emotional stability. It depends on training. It depends on individuals. I'm sure you remember a, we had a famous crying governor in this country many years ago in the 79 era. They used to call him the crying governor because he was so emotional. He used to weep easily. And we have Margaret Thatcher there. She was a woman, but very tough, and she would make decisions. We had people like Dora Quill. So it depends on each individual. But one thing that science has shown is that women are more able to multitask than men. That one has been proven, that women are better at multitasking than men. And Men have, men have their strengths, women have their strengths, but I think that when a person is a leader, you have to act like a man and feel like a woman. <laughs> you understand? You combine both the strengths of the, the male and female gender. Think with kindness, don't be harsh in your thinking, but act decisively. Don't, don't you know, don't be afraid. Please, sorry. If I can add, uh, you know, the reason I'm asking this question is, like, it's very critical. Because even in my house, there are some things that will happen. They will tell that you think like a woman. Or you or, or you'll be told uh, maybe you are a woman. You know, this kind of decision is, is actually for men, not for women. That one happens a lot. And sometimes also, if a particular thing happens, like in my family, for example, you see that all the women will think the same way, <laughs> arriving at the same uh, 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 decision, which we, the men, will be like, ah, what kind of, uh, uh, what kind of <laughs> Those are the stereotypes we need to break. Uh, because those things result from culture. Culturally, in our part of the world, women are supposed to think in a particular way, Men are supposed to think in a particular way, but in this century, this is the 21st century and beyond, men and women must think along the way of logic. And, it, and I'm so glad that there are ladies here, there are gentlemen here, and I'm sure that uh, the ladies in the house are not, they are not slacking at all in being able to take decisions and firm ones too. So, um, we need to train our children. We need to train our daughters to be strong. You know, it, 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 we, both gender are there to complement one another. The male and females are not meant to compete against one another. But when we use the best characteristics of the male and female in the house, in the society, we get the best results. I must say again here that uh, please, uh, for, for the male, you know, the uh, gentleman in the house, please do not at uh, any point in time uh, let situations or maybe uh, persons, you know, make you feel that um, 
you are supposed to bottle up some things that are happening on your inside because you're a man. You know, as, as leaders, you get to a point where there are some decisions you must take, or maybe there are some things you must do. Please do not uh, let anybody, or maybe situations or environments, okay? Uh, try to like have you see yourself that look, uh, I'm a man. I shouldn't express my feelings. I shouldn't, you know, break down. I shouldn't like, uh, you know, uh, let them feel that I'm um, weak. You know, I have to like have a strong. No, they get to a point that as leaders, okay, you will be confronted with some realities of life that we need you to actually break down. If you need to cry, please cry at that point. If you need to like be sober. Please be sober at that time because it will help you come out of it. It will help you move on. Okay. The moment you try to feel, I do not want people to feel I'm like a woman. I do not want people to feel I'm a weak man. You are already bottling it all, and I can tell you the day is going to explode. You might not be able to handle it. All right. So I just feel I should just add that. that. in my contribution. So now as my very senior colleague, I want you to help us and give us some aspects we can include in the Green Century Group. It's a dream about Nigeria. It's a hundred year dream about where we want our health sector to be. We want to know where we are today, where other developed worlds are and where we can get to. Especially in terms of mental health, then in terms of the general facilities going through um, teaching the hospitals, our general hospitals, going down to the primary health centers where we are today. And what is the reason for the fake health centers? We, I used to know here or read that we have a better health center before compared to now. So, and also lastly, back, the reason for the current strike in the system and what can be done to stop it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm delighted that you are looking at health because ultimately um, without health there can't be development. The thing that I want to emphasize is that the way the world is going, it is projected that within the next 30 years mental health conditions will even become the greatest killers. Right now as far back as about 30 years ago, the World Bank actually did a study. And they found that when you look at the burden of disease, the burden of disease, most of the top 10 diseases that place a burden on the health system and the burden on the economy were already mental health conditions. But now we're saying that in fact people are going to die of this. People are going to die of depression. People are going to die of suicide. People are going to die of dementia. And various other mental health conditions like that. Therefore, we cannot as a country be developing a healthcare plan where um, infectious diseases and so on will be the bedrock. Believe me, I have a strong belief that in 30 years time, don't be surprised that HIV is no longer a problem because a solution might have been found to it. Malaria is no more a problem. Polio is already on its way to being uh, kicked out. I don't think we'll have polio again in the next five years. We've had some setback, otherwise we have been saying we're polio free. So we need to pay attention to mental health. Now what do we have today? There's a mental health policy. It has not yet been it's, it's not been it's not been implemented because because a plan has not followed on on the on the policy that that has been passed. So there's also mental health legislation. We don't even have mental our mental health laws date up to 1914 
1943. That's awful. We need to have modern health, uh, modern mental health legislation. We need to implement our mental health policy. We need to pay attention to mental health even before children are born. What are the mothers eating? What are the mothers eating? What do we? What are we putting into nursery education and daycare facilities? When young women who are young professionals working, working mothers, when they have children, what facilities are being provided for for them to still be close to their children to give their children the best uh, mental takeoff? Because believe me, your best years in life to develop your brain are your first five years in life. So if a child is malnourished in the first five years in that, you have already given that child a setback. It's like people want to start a relay. You, you tell somebody to start, his own starting line is behind, you know? So please, I want us to remember this, that mental health is the bedrock to help in the future. And we need to pay attention to it when we are planning for future development. And I'm talking of just the next 30 years. Uh, okay. Um, it's very, very, very uh, interesting to know that uh, in the project you're already working on, you have uh, considered uh, that uh, very uh, uh, commendable. Now, uh, talking about mental health, particularly now, uh, I will uh, strongly advocate that uh, you consider uh, giving it a, a sound priority. And this is because oftentimes, now, mental health has never gained priority in any sphere of activity in Nigeria. Now, give an example. Now, since 1978, the federal government has been trying to, you know, uh, integrate the mental health care system to the primary health care. And so, uh, as we speak right now, that's not what we That's just to show you that across all the levels of our uh, uh, of government, there has never been any of them that have been particular or interested in pushing the interests of mental health. You know, so I really want to comment that we uh, can this in. And please also know that um, when we talk about mental health, it's not just about uh, you know, uh, getting plans, but also please uh, come up with activities you know, that will drive this campaign, this, this is your project. It's come up with activity, not just uh, advocacies and then, no, no, let's not just end there. Because uh, right now, uh, I stand to be I, I think the budget line for mental health in Nigeria is less than 0.03%. And that's terrible. You know, for those of us who may be on the side of mathematics, you can just, just imagine what the budget is for mental health. You know, so that's very awful. And um, it is something that must not just be led to the Ministry of Health. You know, it's something that we should also project activity that will come across the, the, the executive. Okay? Uh, I speak down to you as, uh, you know, a uh, 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 state representative, you know, as, you know, the liberal governors of various states representing uh, in Nigeria right now. So please see to it that you drive also, you know, various projects, you know, campaigns that will that will, that will make our executives, that will make the legislature and the judiciary arm of the government to see the importance of mental health. I can tell you today categorically, there can never be help without mental health. You know, because you know, when we try to define mental health, uh, you know, if our time is pushing, we just Now, if we try to, like, uh, uh, in some way, define mental health, uh, it is at the point where an individual is able to identify his potential. Okay, and being able to manage or cope with stress and at the same time remain productive and contributing to his or her community. Please, ladies and gentlemen, my able uh, uh, executive governor, this is something that an average Nigeria should attain. We should see to it that an average Nigeria is mentally healthy if a top national development would be improved. Right. So please, I'd like to uh, comment for what uh, you've been doing about the article. But please again, push strongly for the mental health aspect. Thank you.
There are various emotional responses. Even if it is money that made that person cry, at least he did cry. <laughs> uh, uh, we don't know what else could could make the person cry or not. But crying is not always even the most important thing. Talking about it is perhaps more important than crying. In fact, it's better if you don't cry but you talk to somebody than you stay in your room alone and cry over an issue. It's more therapeutic when you share your thoughts and talk to somebody so that somebody else can, you know, rub minds with you. Uh, it's one of the things that uh, we was, we've been talking about for a while now. Let's talk. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about our mental health. Let's talk about the fact that we feel mental pain. We feel lonely. Talk about it. You feel angry. Talk about it. You feel happy. Talk about it. But talk. the second question first. No, there, there is no known study that has really come out and studied the Nigerian psyche. The studies that we've had are studies that have looked at levels of mental illness in the, in the community. Those are the kind of studies that we've had. But let me talk about your proposal of Nigeria a mildly paranoid schizophrenic society. I think that um, that is an interesting notion, but I would disagree with it. Yes, we, we've, we've come from different cultures. Unfortunately, our leaders, Hitato, the political class, have they've capitalized on using our the, the, divisions to 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 get the better of us. I mean, when people are campaigning and they are telling you that uh, this one is not from your local government or from your sectorial, so, so you must come. This is the candidate because he's from your area, or this is the candidate because he belongs to the same religion as yourself. And then we are busy looking at ourselves along those those uh, divides. We've not taken time to understand one another, and it is becoming even worse, unfortunately. I went to a federal government college, and in those days, we lived together. I have friends from every single state of Nigeria. And when Nigeria was uh, made up of 19 states, I used to say that I visited every state in Nigeria except one of the 19 at the time. But many young people in Nigeria cannot say that today. They because we are encouraged to 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 not be together. So I think that the time has come when you young people should begin to say that enough of all this. It has to be done on quota by state of origin. Let's let's have the best man. Let's have the best man. Look, let me tell you, I don't care if 
everybody in the federal cabinet come from the same village. As long as we have good electricity, good roads, working hospitals, and, and our country is, is working. But this idea of you know, we have to come from somewhere, we have to balance this. It's not giving us the best and it's not taking us to the best destination. Let excellence be our criterion for determining who our leaders should be, not a matter of zoning or, or where they come from. It should be what do they have to offer us? Where are they taking us? What do we see in them? So there is a hint of that while. Well, the paranoia is there, but I don't. I wouldn't say it has reached the level of schizophrenia. Schizophrenia would imply severe dysfunction. But yes, we don't trust one another. We look at one another from the corner of our eyes. That man is from this part. We don't know whether he's going to do this. We don't know whether what he's going to decide is going to favor all of us. But that mistrust needs to go. And I hope that you will be the generation that will cancel it. Mm. Now, I want to ask um, what is the reason of oppression in Nigeria? Because we were, by culture, we were taught to just learn to, like you said, bottle everything up, and if you are just grow out of it. But then, seriously, here they are, they are suffering, suffering from it. And then, what is the level of trying to make the awareness that people that have this depression issue should be able to come to the hospital? Uh, Oh, um, the, the, the professionals in mental health definitely, and in the medical professions in general definitely know that depression is a medical condition. So it's an important mental health condition. Now, this, this is our dream, that people shouldn't even need to get to hospital to be diagnosed of depression. People should be able to go to their primary health care center and the diagnosis should be made. And uh, we hope that that is going to be the case in Nigeria. Because for as little as 250 Naira a month, you can actually treat depression. But if you don't treat depression, there's loss of productivity. It could even end in suicide. So it's very important for us to take uh, our mental health uh, seriously. I want to take the question of that gentleman at the end. Okay, because yeah. it seems. Thanks a lot for my question. Ma, it's it very this very brief. popular adage yeah. that if someone dies, the person does not feel the pain. Only people are the deceased to feel the pain. So, so when someone asks to be, the person that's asking to be doesn't feel the pain, but people are not being feeling a different possibility. Now, it's because an average mentally ill person does not mean that what he is doing is bad. That's why you see some people act on the very power. Uh, What's your question? And they will be. Uh, so now, this movie, you have any recommendation that can be used for self-tests to know if we are mentally okay or not? Do you have any recommendation that we can carry out a self-test on ourselves to know that yes, if you are mentally okay or not? And also, secondly, this is a controversial phenomenon that every human being is entitled to at least 10 seconds for an interview. That's why it's to just have to mind normal human beings. Well, let's 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 dismiss that straight away. Um, mental illness does not get diagnosed because you did something for ten minutes. If somebody just bashed your brand new car, you can be very crazy for three minutes. And if somebody caught a video of you at that time reacting madly, they might say that uh, the governor has lost his mind. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a person being persistently in a state of mind where they may be, you know, emotionally not the same. They may be withdrawn, they may be unhappy or excessively happy, suspicious, and all those other abnormal things. But there is always the sustainability, it takes time. 
So you, you find that this has been there for days and weeks. You know. So and uh, the second thing. The self test. Okay, self test. Well, this, well, first of all, the self test is to be true to yourself. If, for example, you know that you are beginning to be more suspicious, or people are beginning to complain <laughs> about you, you know, check yourself. You know, if, for example, you know you are beginning to not sleep enough. Suddenly, you are just sleeping one or two hours a night. You know that you used to sleep at least five, six hours a night, and now it's down to half an hour to an hour. Something is wrong. Be truthful to yourself. Talk to talk to your doctor. You know, simple things like that. Or you find that you've lost interest. You're not interested in talking to your friends again. You're not interested in interacting. You are just withdrawn to yourself and moody. And people are beginning to to complain. Then check yourself. So it's important that we listen to ourselves, but we also listen to those who care about us, those who love us, because usually they'll be the first to notice. There's no question. Let's get up. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. You, you, want, you want to answer this now? Um, I just want to say something about depression and okay. depression, whether it's accepted or not. I like to tell you that, yes, even the lower world today, you know, has been looking at depression seriously, like uh, uh, Chief has said earlier. Like um, this year's uh, World Health Day. Thank you very much for coming. And uh, I don't know if you if you've seen this before. Okay, this is uh, the Green Century Code. This is just uh, a blank draft. It's like a magic book. Yes, we call it a miracle because whatever you write here will come to pass. For so long, Nigerians always go round and round and round because we, if every leader comes with a four-year plan and we look forward to the next election, the other leader comes and undo that plan and come up with some plan. So for the first time in history, leaders will not do what they want to do. They will do what the people want them to do. So to achieve that, we want to build the Nigeria of our collective dreams. To do that, we've been able to assemble dreams from Nigerians. About 100,000 Nigerians are sending in their dreams, and the Super 37 are the uh, head of bringing these dreams together, cutting across different sectors. Here, we're setting goals. Now, some of these goals are, are dreams that when you hear them, you begin to ask yourself, how possible is it by like putting the Nigerian flag in space? Not, not giving another country, but building the, space, the rocket and everything and sending our own aeronautic engineers to get to space. So how to achieve it might be difficult. But then, we, as time goes on, all Nigerians will think towards that dimension. And of course, feel free to bring in your dream. It is lovely for you to talk about mental health. And thank you for drawing our attention to that area. Because the Nigeria of our dream will be filled with people who are very, very sane, who are able to, to contain stress and still contribute positively to the society. We wouldn't want it in Nigeria where we have people that are mentally uh, derailed. Thank you very much for coming. Feel free to send your dream across so that we can add it to this. And of course, promote this because no solution without our own direct micro contribution is a guaranteed solution. We don't want this to be tied. It's not to be tied to a particular politician. It's for the people. So that every leader that come can work along with it. Thank you very much yeah, for coming. Much. Oh yes, you have my number. Uh, she has. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're going to take a little break. We'll hold our hands, hands and take a break. The Barun Governor for Act State leave us in the Barun Green. Decree after the count of two. I stand in the sacred gate of time, shoulder to shoulder with my kind and breed. We share a common burden and promise. It travail has started. My water is broken. Something is coming. A superior nation is breaking out. The world is anxiously waiting. And I am the carrier. I must release this precious seed inside of me. The memories of yesterday will not stop me. The pain and shame of today will not define me. My womb is the carrier of the future. Few days from now, my baby will cry in freedom. I shall give to the world a brand new super nation. This is my calling. It is too late to stop me. For my God and my kind, this will surely be. Amen.